Most gardeners plant randomly. A tomato here, some lettuce there, beans wherever there's space. Then everything gets sick at once. Pests destroy entire sections and soil stops producing. The problem isn't what you're planting, it's that you don't understand plant families. Vegetables aren't individuals. They're members of families that share characteristics, attract the same pests, need similar nutrients, and leave identical problems in the soil. When you understand the seven major families, rotation becomes automatic, pest problems become predictable, and soil management becomes simple. Welcome back to Grow Wise Vision, where we combine ancient wisdom with modern efficiency to help you grow more with less effort. If you're new here, this channel is all about practical, research-backed gardening that saves you time and money. Today, we're breaking down the seven vegetable families every gardener needs to know. Before we dig in, if you want to stop making costly rotation mistakes and finally understand why some plants thrive while others fail, hit that subscribe button right now. These family patterns will transform how you plan your garden, and you'll want to catch future videos where we build on this foundation. Now, botanically speaking, there are 8 to 10 major vegetable families that gardeners work with. Nightshades, brassicas, legumes, alliums, cucurbits, umbellifers, the aster family, the amaranth family, and a few others depending on what you grow. For practical rotation purposes, we're going to focus on seven essential families that cover 95% of what most gardeners actually plant. We'll group some botanically separate families together when they behave similarly in the garden because rotation is about practical management, not botanical precision. By the end of this video, you'll see why your tomatoes and peppers always get the same diseases, why your cabbage and broccoli attract identical pests, why planting beans after corn works but planting tomatoes after peppers fails, Seven families. Once you know them, crop rotation stops being confusing and starts being obvious. Let's start with the family most gardeners already grow but don't realize they're related. Family 1. Nightshades. Solanaceae. Tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, potatoes, and tomatillos. If you grow any of these, you're growing nightshades. They're called nightshades because many wild relatives are toxic, though the vegetables we eat are safe. Here's what all nightshades share. They're heavy feeders that pull massive amounts of nutrients from soil, especially nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium. They're susceptible to identical diseases like early blight, late blight, and verticillium wilt. These diseases live in soil for years. Plant any nightshade where another nightshade grew and the disease attacks immediately. Nightshades also attract the same pests. Hornworms, flea beetles, and aphids move freely between tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. If tomatoes get aphids, check your peppers. They're next. For rotation, never plant nightshades where nightshades grew the previous year. Wait at least three years before returning them to the same bed. The diseases need time to die off. This is why planting tomatoes where peppers grew always fails. Same family, same problems. Nightshades need rich, well-drained soil with plenty of calcium to prevent blossom end rot. Add compost heavily before planting them, and consider following them with a nitrogen-fixing family to rebuild what they took. Family 2. Brassicas. Brassica CE. Cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts, turnips, radishes, and arugula. This family includes everything from tiny radish roots to massive cabbage heads, but they're all related. Brassicas are cool season crops that thrive in spring and fall, but struggle in summer heat. They're moderate feeders that especially need nitrogen and sulfur. That's why they develop strong flavors. The sulfur compounds create the characteristic taste we associate with cabbage or mustard greens. The defining pest problem for brassicas is cabbage worms and loopers. These green caterpillars devastate any brassica, but ignore other families completely. If you see them on your kale, Expect them on your broccoli, cabbage, and radishes. They're family specialists. Brassicas also share disease vulnerabilities, particularly clubroot, a soil-borne pathogen that persists for years and attacks only this family. Once clubroot infects a bed, no brassica should grow there for at least five years. For rotation, follow brassicas with something from a completely different family. Never plant radishes where cabbage grew, even though one is a root and one is a head. They're the same family, facing identical problems. 
Many gardeners make this mistake because radishes and cabbage don't look related. Brassicas benefit from following legumes because they need readily available nitrogen. They're excellent before nightshades because they don't deplete soil as aggressively. Family 3. Legumes, Fabaceae, beans, peas, lentils, and peanuts. This is the only family that improves soil while growing. Every other family takes. Legumes give. Legumes form symbiotic relationships with rhizobium bacteria in root nodules. These bacteria capture atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a form plants can use. When legumes finish producing and you cut them down, all that fixed nitrogen remains in soil, available for the next crop. This is why crop rotation systems always include legumes. They're the rebuilders. After heavy feeders like nightshades or brassicas deplete soil, legumes restore it. Legumes are light feeders. They don't need nitrogen-rich soil because they make their own. They do need phosphorus and potassium for root development and pod production. Overly rich soil actually reduces bean production because the plants focus on leaf growth instead of pods. Pest-wise, legumes attract bean beetles, aphids, and occasionally spider mites. These pests rarely cross over to other families, making legumes relatively clean in a rotation. Their main disease issue is root rot in overly wet conditions. For rotation, plant legumes after heavy feeders to rebuild soil. Follow them with demanding crops like nightshades or brassicas that benefit from the nitrogen left behind. Legumes are the reset button in any rotation plan. Never plant legumes where legumes just grew. Even though they add nitrogen, they're still susceptible to family-specific root diseases that persist in soil. Family 4. Alliums. Amaryllidaceae. Onions, garlic, leeks, shallots, chives, and scallions. The entire family shares that distinctive sulfur smell and flavor. They're shallow-rooted crops with similar growing requirements. Alliums are light feeders that don't demand heavily enriched soil. They need good drainage more than rich fertility. Their shallow roots make them vulnerable to competition from weeds. So clean beds matter more than nutrient density. The main pest for alliums is onion maggots, which attack roots and destroy bulbs from below ground. Thrips also target alliums specifically, causing silvery streaks on leaves. These pests rarely bother other families. Disease-wise, alliums face white rot, a persistent soil fungus that can survive 15 years or more. Once white rot infects a bed, growing any allium there becomes nearly impossible. This is why garlic should never follow onions and leeks shouldn't follow shallots. Different crops, same family, same vulnerability. For rotation, alliums work well after legumes or before brassicas. They don't deplete soil aggressively, and their shallow roots don't compete with deep-rooted crops. Many gardeners successfully interplant alliums with other families because they occupy different soil layers. Alliums benefit from consistent moisture during bulb formation, but need dry conditions for curing after harvest. They're relatively low maintenance compared to nightshades or brassicas. Family 5. Cucurbits, cucurbitaceae, cucumbers, squash, zucchini, pumpkins, melons, and gourds. This family includes some of the most vigorous, sprawling plants in the garden. They're easily recognized by their large leaves, trailing vines, and similar flowers. Cucurbits are extremely heavy feeders, rivaling nightshades in nutrient demands. They need massive amounts of nitrogen for vine growth and phosphorus for fruit development. They also require consistent water, especially during fruiting. The defining pest for cucurbits is squash bugs and cucumber beetles. These insects move freely between all cucurbit species but rarely attack other families. If squash bugs appear on your zucchini, check your melons and cucumbers immediately. Cucurbits share susceptibility to powdery mildew, a fungal disease that coats leaves with white powder and reduces photosynthesis. This disease spreads easily in humid conditions and affects the entire family. For rotation, never plant cucurbits where cucurbits grew the previous year. The soil depletion is severe and disease pressure builds quickly. Follow cucurbits with soil-building legumes or light-feeding alliums. Avoid following them with other heavy feeders like nightshades. Cucurbits benefit from compost-rich soil and consistent watering. 
Many gardeners plant them in mounds or hills to improve drainage while providing concentrated nutrients. Family 6. Umbellifers, Apiaceae. Carrots, parsnips, celery, parsley, cilantro, fennel, and dill. This family is named for their umbrella-shaped flower clusters. Many members are grown for roots, others for leaves, but they're all closely related. Embellifers are moderate feeders that prefer loose, deep soil for root development. They need consistent moisture and don't tolerate drought well. Their main requirement is soil texture rather than extreme fertility. The primary pest for umbellifers is carrot rust fly, whose larvae tunnel into roots and destroy crops. Parsley worms, the caterpillars of black swallowtail butterflies, also feed exclusively on this family. Aphids occasionally attack, but they're less family-specific. Disease issues include leaf blight and various root rots, especially in heavy, waterlogged soil. These diseases persist in soil and affect subsequent umbellifer plantings. For rotation, umbellifers work well after legumes because they benefit from residual nitrogen without requiring the heavy feeding of nightshades. They're excellent before brassicas, which appreciate the moderate soil conditions umbellifers leave behind. Never plant carrots where parsnips grew or parsley where celery was. Different crops, same family, same problems. This is a common mistake because root crops and herb crops don't seem related. Family 7. Leafy Greens Amaranthaceae and Asteraceae Lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens, and endive. This is actually two botanical families grouped together because they share similar growing requirements and rotation behavior. Leafy greens are light to moderate feeders that thrive in nitrogen-rich soil, but don't deplete it as aggressively as nightshades or cucurbits. They're cool season crops that bolt in heat, making them ideal for spring and fall planting. Leafy greens face similar pest pressures from aphids, slugs, and leaf miners. These pests prefer tender leaves and attack most greens equally. Slugs especially move freely between lettuce, spinach, and chard. Disease issues include downy mildew and various leaf spots, particularly in humid conditions with poor air circulation. These diseases spread easily within the family but rarely jump to others. For rotation, leafy greens work well almost anywhere in the sequence. They're not heavy feeders, don't leave major disease pressure, and mature quickly. Many gardeners use them as gap fillers between other crops. Leafy greens benefit from quick-release nitrogen for rapid leaf growth. They prefer consistent moisture and partial shade in hot climates. They're among the easiest families to manage. Now you understand the seven families. Here's how this knowledge changes everything. When you plant tomatoes where peppers grew last year, you're guaranteeing disease problems because both are nightshades. When cabbage worms destroy your kale, you know to check all your brassicas immediately. When your soil seems depleted, you know to plant legumes to rebuild it. Rotation becomes simple. Never follow a family with itself. Wait at least three years before returning heavy feeders to the same bed. Use legumes to break up sequences and rebuild soil. The pattern looks like this. Nightshades, then legumes, then brassicas, then alliums, then cucurbits, then legumes again. You're cycling through families, preventing disease buildup, and managing nutrients naturally. Most pest problems become predictable. Cabbage worms mean brassicas are under attack. Squash bugs mean cucurbits need attention. You stop treating every plant individually and start managing families as groups. This is why commercial farms use rotation religiously. It's not tradition, it's biology. Understanding plant families turns gardening from guesswork into strategy. Start by identifying which families dominate your current garden. If you're growing mostly nightshades, you're depleting soil heavily and building disease pressure. Balance your plantings across families to spread out nutrient demands and pest problems. When planning next season, Map where each family grew this year. Don't put the same family in the same spot next year. This simple rule prevents most soil and disease problems. The seven families aren't complicated. They're the framework that makes everything else make sense. Once you see your garden through this lens, rotation stops being a chore and becomes automatic. If this breakdown helped you finally understand crop rotation, 
Hit that like button and let me know in the comments which family dominates your garden right now. And if you want more practical gardening strategies that actually work, subscribe to GrowWise Vision. We're here to make gardening simpler, more efficient, and more successful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we continue building your foundation for a more productive garden.